tutorial, we are going to be discussing about one of my personal favorite types of armor I make, and that's laminar. Uh, a little history about it. No one knows who created it. I mean, there, no one knows if it's John Doe or whatnot. Uh, what can be surmised from historical evidence is that this type of armor originated in the Middle East. Um, we can assume it might have been the Assyrians, the Babylonians, uh, <clears throat> Egyptians maybe. Uh, there's even talk that the, some of the nomadic horsemen tribes up and around the Black Sea, such as the Scythians, may have created this armor. Um, but no one knows for sure. We just do know that it is probably also one of the earlier forms of uh, armor. Unlike other earlier forms, such as scale mail, where you needed a backing of some sort, either a cloth or a leather, uh, this was actually something called free-floating armor, which meant that it was held together by itself. Um, more or less, it's all small plates are held together by leather lacing, which I'll show as we progress throughout throughout this whole entire project. <clears throat> um, I already talked about the equipment from the la in the last one, the scale mail, but I'll just go through it quickly. If you um, if I miss one, I may which may happen. Um, you can always go back and check it out, but I generally have an idea. Um, more or less, you're going to need a couple. Of ball you're going to need a bunch of ball peen hammers. A ruler, a straight ruler, uh, electric shears, uh, a regular pair of hand shears, a pair of vice grips, uh, drill press, grinder, and you're also going to be needing uh, a lot and a lot of leather lacing. Um, also, a pen or a felt pen, a pencil or a felt pen would it's also going to be needed. Uh, as for safety, for safety precautions, eye protection, ear protection, and gloves. That's basically if you're going to be doing anything with metal. Right. So first so, thing is, no further steel ado, we're going to use. Let us start. we are going to be using 16 gauge steel. This is the closest to what they were using back in the ancient times. If you can get bronze, great. Then you can do a definitely a nice bronze bronze age piece. But I'm going from I'm going for dark age, uh, <clears throat> late Roman, early medieval period. Uh, if you can get iron too, but Generally, though, you probably this is probably the easiest and cheapest stuff you can get. Um, you can also use 14 or 20 gauge steel, but I would suggest so uh, is that with 20 gauge steel that would be along the lines of doing small pieces because it's light and it can easily be breached. And 14 gauge steel, while heavier and stronger, is a pain in the ass to cut. So basically, to get the happy medium of strength along with lightness, go for 16 gauge steel. Before I go any farther, uh, one of the reasons I enjoy this armor is because you can make the pieces of laminar any size you want. As you can see, these two are extremely different from, sm from small to large. Uh, the thing is though, is that size really doesn't matter with this armor. Actually, the smaller ones are probably better because you can put more behind each one, allowing so that the blow can be dispersed in better. Uh, the only the important thing about the whole inter this whole entire project is the holes, because if you start drilling holes in different locations, then the leather strap, then the leather lacing is going to have a real hard time trying to find the hole, and then it's going to be cockeyed or it's going to be too high, too low to the other one, causing problems. Also, it can become make the armor totally useless. When you want to make a template. Uh, first thing I would suggest is that you should make it out of oak tag. Make it whatever size you feel is you feel comfortable with. Um, and then once you do that, use that oak tag to create your first metal template. Because the problem with oak tag is that the more you use it, the more the edges are going to be frayed and more of a more of um, it's going to be distorted. With the metal, you can keep it you can keep it the same size. So with that. I'm going to use one of my templates. I'll just use this one. And then place it on the edge of the metal, as so. And make where you make it, like that. So now that you have a concept about where you want it, then you get your straight ruler, and find it here, and use it as a just to be sure that it's straight. That way, you can be sh definitely be sure that you are cutting true and not starting to go off in a different direction. As you can see, 
So now that you have your now you have your lines of where you want the where you want to cut it, you want to get your electric shears right here, like this. You could use regular shears, hand shears, uh, but you can cut it. I'm just telling you right now, it's very painful. So I would suggest go and invest one of these because it helps a lot. Even, but even so, it's a bit of a pain in the ass when you have to cut it. So let's start getting, let's get cutting. First thing you do, grab your glove, make sure that you, you have it on. Get your hand on the edge. That's the reason you want to wear the glove. And just cut. You got your piece right here. All right, as you can see though, the edges are sharp, so, and that's not something you want because it will eventually start slicing into your, to the, your gear if you're wearing it for the Renaissance Festival. And also if you fall wrong, one of these edges may actually go and pierce you. So what you wanna do is, you, this is where the hand shears come in. All you wanna do is cut the edges off to make it a little bit, to give it a dull edge, such as, such as this. Okay, even though you got these edges cut off, the whole entire piece is still sharp. So we're gonna still have to, we're still gonna have to dull the edges down, but that's just a little bit, that's a little later down the line. Now you see the second problem is that it's bent out of shape. This is where this is going on to the next step of this whole entire situation. All right, now that you got your piece cut, you can see that it's bent out of shape. How to get it back into shape? Well, first thing you need to do is get a pair of vice clips. Also, I suggest that, uh, actually I forgot to mention this, but earlier when you start cutting, I would suggest that you get your earplugs in and Put on a pair of goggles because you're going to have pieces of metal flying around and this is where stuff starts getting loud i personally like to keep my hearing all right as you can see this is a this is a vice grip it's not an anvil um if you need it i would suggest to go buy an anvil i just haven't had a chance and i'm also got no money so basically a vice a, vi a, vi a vice is actually the second better thing than nothing uh it's because it's solid it's got some flat areas that you can use and it and that's basically it. So what you want to do is get a piece of metal into your into a pair of clips, to a pair of vice grips like this. Put it down. Get your ball peen hammer. And there you got a flat piece. Okay, now that you have the piece strained now, you want to go get your punch so, so that you can make holes, guiding holes for when you have to drill the hole when you have to drill the holes themselves. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be pounding two here in the top, as so, then followed up by two more holes here. Two more holes here. And then a single hole in the very bottom. If you've never done this before, I suggest that you use a measuring tape or, or a ruler to just pretty much get them into place. But once you start doing this over and over and over again, it becomes repetitious and then you can start eyeing them up. Um, one thing I suggest though is don't get yourself crazy if the holes are not are in perfect are in perfect alignment. You can have it a little bit fudged, but if it's like one hole's down here and the second hole's up here, or 
this hole's in here and this hole's here, then it's a useless piece. You can't use it. But if it's like, as long as you can keep them in general position, in area, you'd be all right. You know, I mean, it's this. You're human. It's not. It's not a piece of. You're not a machine, so you're not. It's not going to be spot on. But don't worry. I mean, I, I accepted that a long time ago, and it's all and just develop it as you go. So once now we got the rivet. Now we got the punch holes. We're going to make the actual holes.